Hey coach, I want to take just a second to show you a form that I use to keep track of my shooters in practice. Whether we're doing free throw shooting, mic and drills, or three point shooting, doesn't matter. This helps me keep track of who are my best shooters, who are the shooters that need to work in a specific area. So it also gives your players the opportunity to know and to keep track of where they're at. Are they improving? Are they staying the same? Uh, who are they chasing or who are they ahead of? So you can kind of make a game out of it as well. If you have our Bronco shooting test, this works perfect and you're going to see how to keep track of that bronco shooting test since it's based on an average of the number of uh, three-point makes they've had if you don't have bronco shooting it's a 10 minute uh, three-point shooting test that makes your kids go through a series of fundamental skills with shooting before they get to shoot the three-pointer once they make it to the three-pointer they can then see how many they can they can put up and make in a certain amount of time the better the score they either get a red light, yellow light, or a green light rating in that test. A red light, we don't want you to look at it. Yellow light, two, uh, two miss limit on three-pointers. And a green light, you kind of can shoot when you want within the offense. So that's something that you may want to take a look at within the membership. Now let me move this out of the way so we can see everything. All right, so we have free throws. We have Mikens, Bronco shooting, three-point shooting, star shooting and then minute three-point shooting. And the difference between the two, two three-point shots, are this is a number of minutes I've asked them to shoot. So you're gonna shoot three-pointers for two minutes straight, uh, where this three-point shooting is just, you're gonna shoot 100, or you're gonna shoot 20, and how many did you make? So it's gonna be a little bit different um, with what I'm asking them to do. But let me walk you through this right here on free throws so we can see exactly what we're looking at. First, it's important to recognize that this is in alphabetical order. So it rates all of our, any number with a one first, and then it goes down to two, three, four. So player one, player 10, 11, 12, and then it'll jump down to player two. So with that, we know that all of these percentages are gonna be all over the place because not everybody's gonna shoot, you know, your alphabetical order, your A's are not gonna be your best shooters and your Z's are gonna be your worst shooters. So I've color coded these to tell me who's a good shooter no matter where they're at in this list. And the reason I put it in like this is it helps you keep track of what, when you're, when you're putting in the uh, values, it helps you do it really fast. So it helps you keep track of things a lot quicker. If the names are all sorted by who's the best shooter to the worst shooter, it's not a bad way to do it. But you're constantly looking at a player's name and you got to find them in the list and go over and plug it in. So keeping them this form as a coach helps me easily identify uh, who shot what. I can put the number in, I can see their percentage and the color. Uh, if I was gonna give this to the players, I would probably put it in alphabetical order, or excuse me, I would put it in um, percentage order from the, the best shooter down to the worst, that way they could see it if I was gonna hand it out. But let's take a look real quick at how this works. You got the total number of attempts, we've got the total shots made as a team, and then our percent as a team. So we're shooting 71.8% in practice. If I was shooting 60% in a game, I'd know that something's off here. How are we shooting almost 72%? We're 12% lower in a game. Uh, maybe we don't have enough pressure on them. We're giving them too much time, but I could adjust things to try to make it more game-like. If I put in new attempts here, and I'm going to put in 10, you should see all their values decrease because they all basically have blank value so they're being counted as a zero so as you put the players values in and we'll enter in a few of them they're going to go back up to where they were or wherever the new number is if a player misses practice they're sick let's go ahead and give these guys all nine they had a pretty good shooting day so this player's number is definitely going to be affected in a negative way. But what it does is it tells that player, I've got to shoot those shots before practice, after practice, because I want my percentage to go back up. Because if they were to miss, let's say, two days in a row, that'd be two zeros. That's really going to lower them. So they'd want to make sure that they get their shots in and they get those recorded with the coach so we can put them back in there. It's also an easy way for you to know, hey, if a kid missed, it's just blank and I can move on. So. That's one thing to keep in mind. As we put in a value here, it will change everything. And then when we put in the, the player's makes, then it will you know, work itself out to their average again. All right, so how did we get this color coded? If we select this whole column here, 
we're going to go over to format and we'll go to conditional formatting. And this is where I put in the color code. Now there wasn't one in there originally, so I hit add a new code. And it pops up with a single color or a color scale. And I picked color scale because I want it to go and tell me who the worst, who kind of your middle guys are, and then who your best shooters are. Let me move over just a little bit. So anything below 69%, 69% below is going to be a red in our program. If the player is at 70% or above, they're yellow. And if they're 80% plus, they're going to be a green. Now you can see on our sheet over here that they start to kind of blend together. It goes from one extreme to the other. So if you're the farther you are from 69, the more red it is. And then as it goes up, you see that with 71, 72, they start to be a yellowish color. And although 79 is not at 80%, it's pretty green because they're pretty close to it. So it gives me a nice color code to say who my best kids are and who my worst kids are. If I want to change these values, I can just go in here and let's say that uh, anybody who is below a 60% is going to be red. And you're going to start to see that we start having some orange in here. So if it's orange, because I have a bigger variation, it starts to add in a couple more colors from my spectrum here. So if you wanted to do that, you could. You can change it to whatever it is that you want to change it to uh, that works in your program. If you want to just be able to highlight certain kids who are 80 and above, because that's all you want to keep track of, all you do is hit single color. And then I want to go here and just say is greater than and What's my value? 80. <clears throat> and it might ask us to give it in a percentage here. There we go. So it does ask me for the percentage. So 0.8, and you can see that it highlighted it automatically. That's the only one that I have. So if you're just looking at your best shooters, um, that anybody above an 80% would be here. You can see I have 180 here, but he's not above 80, so he wasn't highlighted. So if I want to change that to make sure I represent him, I just put in 0.79, and now they're both highlighted. So that's something to do. I like the color scale. Again, you can put in whatever you'd like here. If I wanted to change this so it was in order of who is the best shooter, I'd highlight the player's name all the way over to the bottom of my percentage. Now I'm gonna to go to data, sort range, and I'm gonna do it by column S, cause that is where, oh, excuse me, column U, that is where my values are. And I want it from highest to lowest, so Z to A, hit okay. And now you can really see the colors. So we've got red as we get into 70, it's yellow. As we get above 70, it starts to turn green until finally we're above 80 and that gives me my green light shooters. Okay, so that would be a way. Now the thing to remember is these are all in a different order now. So when you go to input them, if you don't sort them back, um, then by alphabetical order, you're gonna have to look to see, okay, player one, okay, what did player four have? What did player six have? Where if they are all sorted, and we'll sort them this way, A to Z in column A, it puts them back in order. If that's the way that I recorded them, I can just quickly go down the list and type in exactly what the player player had in their shooting test, and I don't have to look for it because they're all in the same order that what I had when I recorded my sheet in practice. All right, so just kind of two things to keep in mind, two different ways of sorting it. Now, the mic and drill, you can see I didn't sort it at all, and I could. All I would have to do is pick what I wanted to sort, for the percentages, I'm going to go over to format. I'm going to say conditional formatting. And this time I'm going to go single color. And I want to have anybody who is greater than or equal to a 36. So these are guys who are going to be halfway decent at it, kind of my mid range on up. And boom, it highlighted them. Anybody who had that, I know exactly who my best mic and shooters are. So that's a way that you could do it real quickly. Go ahead and scroll down. Now let's look at Bronco shooting because Bronco shooting, you're taking a test over and over again and you want the kids' averages because their average is what's going to determine if they're red, yellow, or green. If you just do it one time, one kid could have an unbelievable night or an extremely off day in practice and it's going to be skewed. You want to make sure that you have the 
the average each time you do that shooting. So here we've only done it three times at this point. So I've got three attempts. This person's made 156 for an average of 52 makes per drill. Uh, down at the bottom, this might be, say, your center or something. Uh, he makes some threes, but not at a real high rate. So he's only made, in three attempts, he's made 89 total for almost a third average. These are all done based on the, how many makes they have, highest to lowest. If I want to go ahead and sort this, which I do, I will sort this um, range in column A from A to Z. And now it's given them to me. Player 1 is a 52. Player 10, who was my lowest before, is not the lowest anymore in the order, but still is in shooting. And I can see where my kids land, who's a yellow, a red, and a green white shooter. You would change this the same way we changed the other one. We could highlight that. We could say format conditional formatting. I've got a color scale here. Now these values are different because I'm looking at a different set of data, but anybody who's 39 and below is red, 40 to 49 is going to be my yellow, and 50 is going to be, and above is going to be my green light shooters. So I could change those values to whatever I wanted for my program. <clears throat> so that's the way that you can sort the data. You don't have to keep track of these every single day. Um, but it automatically updates it. You could hand them out to your players to show where they're at. You could just give them to your coaches so you could see where uh, players are at and make decisions that way. But have your shooting be meaningful in practice. If it's meaningful, kids will pay more attention to it. They'll go harder at it. And if they know you're keeping score, it doesn't have to be punitive. But if they know that, hey, I'm looking to see who my best shooters are. I'm looking to see who my best free throw guys are. So I know who's going to be shooting those in the game or who we want to get driving to the hole at different times. Uh, because if they go to the line, they're going to be more automatic. It's a way for you to make decisions in your program that are going to help you win more games. So if you're just letting them shoot whenever they want, or you're just saying, well, he's my best shooter all the time, every situation, it's really hard to say because do you have the numbers to back it up? Do you have anything other than just you saying, I think they're my best shooter? This gives you that information, and you can put in whatever drills you want. It's set up, change the name of it, input the amount of time. So when we did this one time. And we got this score, three-point shooting. We did this uh, certain number of attempts. These are the makes based on those attempts. If we did minute three-point shooting, two minutes, okay? This is how long we gave them to do it, and this was the score they got in those minutes. However you want to do it, doesn't matter. It's set up to keep track of your percentages for you. Uh, and it should be a real handy thing for you. Coach, I hope you found this helpful. It's going to be inside the coaching membership, if you go to um, the coaching notes and tools, that's where you're going to find it next to the stats and the scouting and different tools that you would use. This is going to be um, a practice shooting chart. So that's what you're going to be looking for in there.